pause this music here and we'll switch to the in-game scene. We got it. We got it. All right then, guys. Welcome back to NC versus CZ. Um, <laughs> I like the way it rhymes. It, it's kind of cool. Uh, it's currently a one all for these guys in this set of games. So it's been really fantastic so far. Uh, NC with that game one point. CZ bringing it back to one all. And I'm hoping for a really close set of games here. These teams are really talented players and obviously a lot of uh, good, good play from both of these teams so far. Both of them being a little bit creative as well, which is what we like to see. Uh, there's always, always room for improvement. There's always room for new strategies and new ideas and CZ, CZ clearly demonstrating that in that last game as well with the landing of those uh, those um, scouts sorry at the early feudal age and I'm interested to see what these teams bring out here for game number three which is going to be sand maze and a fantastic map on this War is Coming map pack. Sand maze has been around for a little while but it's it's such an interesting map because of the functions, the, the kind of the way it functions, the fact that we have passable terrain by boats and by um, by war by land units, but also the fact that you can build on this terrain as well, um, meaning that even if you f think you're fully walled, you're you're probably not because if you wall up to the center lake, the boats can always go around. So it adds an interesting dynamic, and I think this map is you know open to a lot of different strategies as well. The Sand Maze map is one of my favorites uh, from the War is Coming map pack for sure. Uh, the fact that you have got fishing in the middle, but the fishing isn't so huge that it's worth going on an all-out galley war for it. But also, the fact that the flanks are so open, it's difficult to wall yourself in completely. Uh, though, you could do a little wall off between the trees around your starting location, simply because you do have uh, quite a few clusters of trees around your TC, which makes walling slightly easier uh, there. But you can't really do any ambitious walling on this map easily, meaning that early... Dark Age aggression, early Feudal Age aggression, definitely viable. And at the same time, you could always go for a dock and rush and do that. Obviously, in the late game, water control going to be a little bit more uh, useful to you as uh, the game opens up a little bit and you can start to hold down map control with the water, uh, water that you have. But I feel like on the flanks, you've got options open to you there and you could... You could even rush on this map and it would be extremely effective if your opponent goes for a dock and you just rush them. And although you wouldn't have a dock yourself, you could really put them behind. And this is what I, I liked about Ancient Lake version 3, um, but now I dislike because it is a one strap map pretty much. But this one is good. And anyway, let's introduce the players then and uh, see what's going down. Uh, very down, uh, very, the very south of the map, sorry, in the yellow, we've got Skittle here playing as the Mongols. Um, the Skittle bin, well, he put a fantastic performance into that first game, but game number two was a little less uh, less good from him, I guess, losing the water to Yannick in the north. But uh, we'll see what he pulls out of the bag this one. He's in the yellow down here as the Mongols. In the pocket position for their team, in uh, the red, we've got uh, Tsu, Tsu Nilpford, uh, the hippopotamus man, the guy that you guys probably know. And uh, he's in the red there as the Vikings in that pocket position. And always nice to have the Vikings in the pocket on this style of map. Uh, the other pocket player for the NC team, we've got Andorin in the green. He's playing as the Franks. So again, a nice pocket sib to have for the uh, early Frank Knights, perhaps for, for raiding and such. And on the flank for NC, we've got Pedro in the blue, playing as the Celts over here. And uh, probably, probably, uh, don't, don't quote me on this entirely, but uh, probably worth going for water as the Celts, I would feel, due to their wood gathering bonus and uh, allowing them to get a little bit of extra wood in and do a nice, comfortable grush. But it, he's not sending a villager forward yet, and we're not seeing any, uh, we're not seeing any dot coming out from him yet, but we are seeing a conga line of scouts going across the center of the map. These guys loving the conga and they're having a great time, uh, all just fighting amongst one another. And uh, see, Zed seem to be right on it with their, their scout micro and their communication, but uh, Yannick here with just three health on his scout, gonna escape by the skin of his teeth, but very close to uh, losing, wow, more scouts here from uh, NC. A little bit of a battle going on, but I want to introduce the other team. We'll just quickly see what goes down. Nilpford and Andorin losing two, uh, a scout each. Error losing his, and uh, Exit and uh, 
your exit's going to chase down Skittle by the looks of it, whilst uh, Mango chases down Pedro. I'd say that uh, CZ definitely won that scout war there, with Yannick keeping his scout alive for now. But anyway, up to the north of the map then. For this CZ team on that flank position, we've uh, got uh, uh, Era. He's playing in the orange as the Aztecs. A good, good flank save here, actually. And I think if um, Pedro knows that he's against a uh, Aztec player up here, which he doesn't at the moment, then he might be more inclined to drush. But he is doing a drush anyway, which is probably a good thing, considering he's against the Aztecs. And the Aztecs is pretty much uh, are pretty much gonna be rushing, uh, drushing no matter what, sorry. In the pocket position here for CZ, we've got Exit in the teal, he's playing as the Persians. And in the other pocket position, we've got uh, CZ Mango playing as the Koreans in the purple. And on that flank for the CZ team in the or not that's not the orange, <laughs> in the grey, we've got Yannick playing as the Spanish. So those civs then definitely seem to me to be slightly more in favour of the NC team. The civs here obviously not mirrored. We've got Aztecs, Spanish, Koreans and Persians versus Celts, Vikings, Mongols and Franks. And I feel like the Celts, Vo uh, Vikings, Mongols and Franks, I, I feel like they have more synergy. I feel like they are probably going to be a better combination especially when you've got the vikings and the flank uh, and sorry and the franks in the pocket positions with your flanks being the mongols and your other flank being the celts i, I feel like it doesn't get too much better than that though pedro here scupping scuppering up his drush a little bit getting a little bit close to that town center losing quite a bit of health on these units and Pedro's scout still hurt from that scout war by the looks of things, but uh, Era did lose his scout in that scout war, so Pedro's rush here could be pretty effective, but uh, as long as it's three versus two, Era will have the advantage there, and of course that Aztec rush so strong, five militia, and uh, even a potential for the mana arms upgrade coming in once he reaches the feudal age. So obviously, because these guys rushing at the top, top, neither of them have built a dock. In the south, meanwhile, we've got a dock out for Yannick, but we have got a, a rush coming in by the looks of things from Skittle. Now, I might be wrong. Um, I'm just having a look at the time, and he might not actually be rushing at all. No, 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 he's not. He's doing a fast feudal, and he's going to go for scouts. So no rush from Skittle, but he hasn't built a dock. So... No fish income from him, but we are going to see fast scouts coming out. And as a result, he could hit Yannick quite hard on this flank. Uh, Yannick at the moment is still in the Dark Age. He's not actually clicked up yet, so there's no defense that he can do against the scouts with military units. He's either got to wall up and protect himself, or he is basically screwed. Mango at the moment is starting to wall now, but we're seeing those scouts coming out really quickly from Skittle. And of course, the, the Mongols with their, their incredible incredibly fast feudal time and, uh, and scouts. It's a really powerful combination and we could see Yannick getting hit quite hard on this flank position here. So at the north, uh, Pedro still got his uh, militia out and it looks like, yeah, two dead bodies there, but that's one of Pedro's militia, one of errors, and he's going to send those uh, militia, uh, Pedro's going to send those militia right to the back. Just, to, I think it's more to keep error busy. <clears throat> I think he'd rather have those militia going to the back of the map um, and into sort of friendly territory, these these orange militia from Error, than uh, going forwards into his base. And although he's walled up, um, it's just probably better to be safe. Safe and sorry. So Pedro giving Error the runaround at the moment, just trying to avoid him. He knows if he uh, engages that he will lose, but he's just keeping Error busy, I guess, for now and avoiding him from going aggressive on the front. Meanwhile, Pedro and the other guys start to, to team wall this up, which is pretty nice, actually. And uh, I like the fact that this is coming up really early. We saw this before in that first game from NC, and it, it paid off massively for them. So that was really fantastic for them. And Skittle now with those scouts on the flank, killing one or two villagers already. Yannick now is uh, screwed, basically. He's uh, not feudal yet. He can't get a barracks out to make a spearman yet. Uh, we could get a barracks, but no spearmen. And he's got no gold income, which means this uh, this uh, dock is going to be idle. Uh, well, not idle. He will be able to make a few galleys, I guess. But it's going to be slightly idle. More idle than he would like, anyway. So Skittle here going to come in once again. Probably going to delay this barracks somewhat. Going to get a couple of villager kills, perhaps. Some of these guys getting very low already. And Yannick now trying to wall up as fast as he can. So superb play by Skittle on this flank. Uh, meanwhile, on the water... 
We've got the German team seemingly getting ahead here. Nupford managing to sink a couple of ships from Yannick. And Yannick is not having a good day at the moment. Not at all. As Nupford seems to take water control pretty, uh, pretty comfortably here. Mango, the Korean player, is going to be doing the Grush for CZ. But it's just, just Nupford doing the Grush for the, um, for the... German team for NC, but he's the Vikings, his uh, galley's so cheap, he's going to be able to get the advantage here, and he already has got the advantage over Mango, so we'll see some dead fishing ships probably from uh, CZ very soon. And on this right flank, still Yannick now uh, just getting up that barracks, and it's Spearman coming out. So this, I don't know what plan he, he had, I'm guessing it probably wasn't to be um, rushed down like this, and as a result now... Uh, I think he probably wanted to fast castle, actually, looking at his resources here. I think he probably wanted to fast castle, but that's so risky. Why would you fast castle without walling first and uh, being so slow to do so as well? He's obviously trying to fast castle and build a castle to make some conquistadors. And the Spanish are in that awkward situation, really, where they can't make archers, which are... One of the best, I'd, I'd even go as far as to say the best feudal age unit, the archer, simply because of its versatility, its hit and run tactics, and its strength once you get fletching. So, yeah, Yannick kind of really falling behind now, and his fast castle plans have been completely screwed over. If he can make it to the castle age and get out of castle, he might be fine. I think he'll probably still click up before Skittle, who at the moment is still feudal by quite a long way, but he is making or has made quite a lot of scouts and looking and roaming and to do some more damage and CZ still wide open the other pocket player exit not walled at all error is not walled either fully and although Mango is walled, um, it hardly compares to the team wall that we've already got going for NC at the moment on the water still Nupford looking great uh, he is still um, holding that water control there, and now he's going to, well, once he completely takes water control here, obviously that's not done until these docks are taken down, but he could start sending his ships onto this kind of sandy area. He could start, you know, coming into this area, for instance, he's already here, and start hitting villages on this wood line. He could start breaking down these palisade walls for Skittle to allow him to enter the CZ's, uh, uh, the CZ's uh, team uh, Sorry, it's their base, even. Um, however, the CZ looking to hit back right about now. So, uh, we've got Exit up to the Castle Age with some Knights coming out. And, and Doran now just reaching Castle. We've got Exit up to the Castle Age, of course. And uh, I think that's about it so far. Some more Castle Age upgrades coming in. But Andorin and Exit both Castle now. Exit coming in with those Knights. And he's going to be looking to basically do what damage he can. But we've got a double wall off from Pedro. Double palisade walls, and it's going to take a, a few moments for Exit to get through here, a little while, and it should give Pedro enough time to react. We've got a sling coming up from Nilkford here, the Viking player, after taking the water, just resigning themselves to slinging. But uh, Mango, with a few galleys in the middle, he's still going to look to get some kind of a comeback against Nilkford here. Nilkford taking down those docks from Mango, but uh, perhaps Mango will get a couple of fishing ships if he... Uh, if he's a sneaky beaky like, but we'll see, we will see. Uh, obviously, those knights from Exit at the moment looking a little bit threatening. And, and Doran now up to the Castle Age as well. But uh, he's playing Franks, so we're going to have Frank knights coming out very quickly. I guess the only benefit here for Exit going against the Frank knights is that he can do a switch into, um, into camels if he likes. But uh, it's going to take him a little while to get those camels out, and obviously those Franks, Frank Knights will have the upgrade advantage over him immediately, simply because they have an extra 20 health for free once they start popping out. So Pedro here, going to keep these Knights at bay for the time being, or is he? Or is he? Oh, very fast walling from Pedro. That was about as close as you could get. Wow, so close for him. And Pedro now coming in with those archers, perhaps trying to bait exit away. Exit's not having any of it. He wants to get through those walls, but those knights from Andorin coming in. Pedro uh, going to be upgraded to crossbow now, and those knights from Andorin plus the crossbows from Pedro should be enough to send Exit packing for now. But uh, that is for now, anyway. Uh, Exit's going to keep those knights coming out, it seems. But no upgrades on there at all, which kind of says to me he's not going all out into these. And, uh, yeah, he has got those three TCs up already. So he's focusing more here on economy than pure double stable production. And if you were expecting to see more knights out, you'd expect to see... Um, 
more upgrades basically and in this situation we've got Andorin plus one defense already on his knights here and I imagine we'll end up seeing Andorin making a few more um, over time simply because those upgrades are coming in nice and early and uh, he's going to want to obviously capitalize on that upgrade advantage while he can as well. Snubford's still looking good on the water, but Mango's still got those galleys and still looking to take out a few fishing ships, perhaps. We've also got uh, Mana Harms down here from Error, just like, what? On the complete opposite side of the map? Who'd have thought it? Skittle is up to the castle age at long last, and double knights, uh, double stables even from him. But that castle did make it up for J Yannick in the end. Finally able to get that one up and get up to the castle age. But Yannick taking quite a bit of a beating. He's down to 39 population. And that is um, basically seven population behind uh, the next person up in terms of population count. So uh, Yannick there kind of far behind now and not what you want as the Spanish player here. You want to get those conks out, start uh, helping out your flank players or well, I guess he is a flank player, but start uh, helping out your teammates with those conquistadors, which are just so strong in the early castle age and in fact for the rest of the game. Um, so, era, era, sorry, Exit's uh, base has uh, been breached, his walls have been breached, and Exit is now on the, the defensive by looks of things, gathering inside of that town centre as Pedro and Endorin come forwards to try and pick off a few villagers, see what damage uh, they can do, and uh, give uh, Exit the D. Uh, Exit, like I said, up on that uh, 40 Cs, and uh, hey, we have a donation. Thank you very much, Dale Andrew, uh, for donating $34. Wow, thank you mu very much, man. Happy belated birthday. Birthday. Yeah, um, it was my birthday yesterday. Where were you? You weren't here. <laughs> I forgive you, of course. But uh, thank you very much. Much appreciated. And uh, as usual, like, all I can say is thank you, really. But uh, donations and such like that help me stay so motivated. And, you know, every single time I'm coming up to stream and I'm just like, yeah, I want to get the stream going. I feel so excited to stream um, it's it's insane it's great I'm absolutely loving it at the moment so in the center of the map Yannick here with a fire ship coming out but we've seen fire ships fall flat on their faces many times before and once again we saw it happen again fire ships just do not work in this game unfortunately I wish they did but they just don't mango here fire shipping down that night I wonder who will win the deadly battle the through the fire and the flames and Doran fighting the fast fire ship of mango and it's obviously going to be the knight that wins is there anything that a fast fire ship can do apart from from die and explode into the ocean into in a uh, hundred thousand million parts uh, there really isn't a lot is there <laughs> they don't seem to be all too great so we've got skip coming in now with these nice interestingly enough actually he's done plus two attack first rather than plus two defense I don't know if that's a misclick but I doubt it considering that um, the defense and the attack upgrade are on the opposite side, well, the attack upgrade's on the left and the defense upgrade's on the far right. But interesting that he's gone for plus two attack first. I, The plus two attack's going to help you kill villagers faster. That's basically what the plus two attack's going to do. The, plus def the extra defense is going to give you more longevity underneath town centers and stuff. And typically speaking, that's what you're going to want. Plus two defense over plus one attack, especially when you're going up against conquistadors who massacre your knights like uh, like a hot knife through butter. But yeah, uh, that TC from Mango there looks like it's gonna fall. Mango trying to get that castle up there, but those knights are all over this skittle now with plus two defense as well. So. Those knights are fully upgraded, and let's have a quick look at that military tab. So far, Skittle killing 21 units, losing 18 though. But he is going to look, well, it looks like he's going to take down that town center from Mango, who has lost 29 units, but only killed 16 so far. And he's going to keep losing units as well, if he's not careful, as these knights just run rampant over his base. And this is the problem with walling in, like, the way, the way that CZ have walled. You see how they've walled between these starting tree lines? Whenever they start cutting through the trees, they have to wall again, and it becomes more and more of a problem as they go on. It's just something, another thing for them to watch out for, another thing for them to be cautious of. And <laughs> as such, it does get a little bit awkward. This is kind of funny, though. Mango's um, villager has been walled in by Nopefoot here. Nopefoot, the legend, coming through with that villager and just walling that villager in. That is... You just don't see that, really, in a, in a top game like that, but that is, that's hilarious. <laughs> Mango there, 
his villager is stuck for eternity. And even Skittles coming over with a villager to try and wall it in some more. But of course, uh, the knights from Exit are here. And uh, Exit might just help out. Exit might send uh, let, let Mango's villager be free. But uh, it doesn't look like he will. Obviously, the bigger pressure here is Skittle. And uh, Nirolian just donated $2. Thank you, Nirolian. Uh, hey, man, first time I catch your stream. I usually watch your YouTube. Keep up the awesome job. Well, thank you very much, man. I will certainly try. And uh, I am streaming a lot recently, pretty much uh, every day between Monday and Saturday. Um, so if you uh, ever want to know when I am streaming, just check below the stream. And my stream schedule is there. I know I need to update it, and I will do that um, during the stream today. But thank you for watching, and thank you for the support. My, uh, my, my main man. Uh, anyway, uh, this capsule is up for Mango, but CZ are looking pretty down and out at the moment. They are really not looking great. We've got, uh, Era coming in with elite eagle warriors here, though. So, he's made it up to the Imperial Age, which is a bloody good job, because, uh, he, he is needed. He is needed in this situation. Skittle here is uh, just all over this at the moment. That town center from Mango nearly down as well. But uh, NC looking fantastic so far this game. Uh, but this should be enough to push Skittle back. But Skittle's already done the damage. He has done so much damage here. And uh, there's no more Imperial Age upgrades on the way. But that Imperial Age upgrade for Error could be what CZ need here. To, uh, to basically bring them back into this. If we have a quick look at the overall score lead, there's about 500 average score between CZ and NC, which is pretty significant. Um, but we have got these elite eagles coming over the map now. Um, unfortunately, though, they're going up against, or unfortunately for CZ, I guess, they're going up against a fully walled off base here from, uh, well, a fully walled off center of the map, which is going to make it difficult for them to get in. I mean, the purpose of the elite eagle in this situation is to basically uh, mass up in numbers, break down your enemy's walls, and spread out. And once you get into your opponent's base, just spread out, kill as much eco as you can. But he's not really doing that at the moment. He's not really going to have an easy way in. The easiest way in is probably going to be through Skittle's base. And Skittle at the moment is walling it up with stone. Will he wall it up in time? It looks like he might, though it's uh, maybe a little bit close as these units approach now. We've got a, a petard coming out for Yannick. Actually, two petards, in fact. And, of course, you need two petards. Why do you need two petards to break down a piece of stone wall? Two petards are exactly... Uh, the amount of firepower you need to break down one wall piece. And this is going to be pretty nice from CZ on this right side, actually. I think... This could be um, this could be what they need to, to start bringing this game back a little bit. Obviously, they have still lost water, and this is a huge water boom from Nilpford in the center of the map. Obviously, that's a lot of extra fishing ships from him, and uh, they are that resource, sorry, being slung to the the do predominant players in this game. Anyway, uh, waiting for this petard bust here, and uh, oh, look at that nice play by Yannick. Xing that on the minimap, and you see he's just Xing that like crazy because this conquistador's got in three villagers down, and he's holding that gate open. So that gate now wide open for Era to come through with his eagles, but Era's not going for it. He's not going to go down that way, and I don't know why. It would make sense. However, another gate coming up behind, and of course this uh, this area back here is still walled up as well. Uh, I want to see where he's going to go. Uh, these guys coming forwards. Nilford coming in with the galleys, though. That could be perfect. The galleys here probably going to go down pretty quickly to any infantry attacks because they have no melee armor. But uh, they could snipe the petards. However, they just didn't notice in time. They're coming in now for the petards. But the petard bust, it looks very much real as they come through. But unfortunately, there is still Palisade Wall there. And the wall's not going down. Oh, God, Yannick, you had one job. You he had one job. And that was to take down the stone wall. Unfortunately, he attacked the Palisade Wall. And uh, that's just not going to work now. Uh, that one getting focused down by the galleys there. And this one going to basically uh, maybe you know damage the wall to half health. But that is just not enough. And NC are still defended just fine. Meanwhile, Exit trying uh, to defend his base from raiding um, of from Andorin at the moment. Andorin with these knights just, just being a pain in the ass, basically dragging about eight or nine eagles over to the corner of the map where they can do nothing but kill his single knight. Um, 
well played by NC, that's all I can say. Uh, they're doing a really nice job. Of course, Frank Knights are incredibly strong. And, you know, put a Frank Knight against a fully upgraded Aztec Eagle, and the Frank Knight is going to win quite comfortably um, once upgraded. So, obviously... Um, and Doran here is just waiting for the Imperial Age upgrade at the moment and making more knights for now. Probably going to get a bit of sling from uh, from Nilpford fairly soon. But we've also got Skittle who is up to the Imperial Age now I believe. And uh, wow, look at those resources for him. He has got so much resource at the moment. But I'm not really sure what his plan is. I mean, he, he went pretty hard uh, into... Uh, Mango space and put Mango right down uh, out of this game for now. But with Skittle being in the Imperial Age, as the Mongols, um, I'm surprised he's not got a castle out yet, to be honest with you. That's his first castle. And he is going to be pretty slow here, considering he's had a sling, remember, uh, to actually start getting these. Uh, elite manga die out, which is kind of unfortunate. It's not what we wanted to see. Meanwhile, though, Pedro in the north of the map. Um, notice how CZ at the moment are being really kind of aggressive. This is obviously because they had that Imperial Age advantage, but getting really aggressive on this north side. We've got Pedro up to Imperial now as well. Elite Woad Raiders coming out. Yet another counter to the Eagles. Uh, basically, Woad Raiders going to beat them. Uh, no question about it and uh, once they get massed up enough they can probably engage that head on and error will have to move back so error has not been able to fulfill his his main job as the Aztec player and that's to go up to the Ca Imperial Age quickly and raid I don't think there's been any raiding done and NC have managed to keep their walls strong keep their walls up and that's really impressive so very well played by them so far they have still got that score lead and NC are looking pretty comfortable at the moment. Um, Milkford's boats just being annoying, I guess. I mean, they're probably going to go down to the Eagles pretty quickly. And it's not very often you get to see boats fighting land units. But yeah, boats die very quickly to infantry and just any land units simply because... Sorry, not land unit, melee unit. Simply because they have no melee armor at all. Boats are not designed to be attacked by uh, <laughs> by eagles and such. So, eagles doing a good job. But, nope for keeping them busy. And uh, just taking a little bit of health off of these guys. Uh, the war galley is going to be doing a total of one damage per arrow to these eagles. But still, it's something. It's better than nothing. It's buying Pedro some time to uh, get those woad raiders up. So, the main difference here for these guys is that Nilford, the Viking player, is just slinging his teammates, allowing them to get extra resources and basically just build more overall. Now, that's that's basically what Nilford's job is here, just sling. But because these guys don't have a Viking player, the uh, CZ team have no Viking player, they are not, they're not getting any slings or anything like that. They're all basically looking after themselves at the moment. And uh, as a result, you don't have anyone who's really so, so far ahead in this game at the moment um, for CZ. I guess you could say errors ahead, but he's not made, it, not made anything of this so far. Finally, just getting uh, the final plus four attack upgrade on these elite eagles, though. They are fully upgraded now. But once again, still not doing any damage. Yannick up to Imperial, starting to get those Cavaliers out. And it's nice to see this game go to the Imperial Age, actually. It's not very often you get to see that. Uh, and Doran must be up to Imp. Yeah, he's nearly there now. He's very close, and he's on 80%. And obviously, Frank, going to be going for Cavalier, going to be going for Paladins. And once they're out, once they're up and running, that's going to be very painful. So Castle Age still for Exit. Castle Age still for Mango, and that makes two Castle Age players for CZ versus the three Imperial players from, well, two Castle Age players, two Imperial players for CZ versus the three Imperial players for um, NC, and the Castle player who is Nupford is the Slinger. So, obviously, NC looking in a better position at the moment. In the north of the map, we've got Pedro pushing forwards with those Siege Rams, and those Celt Rams, they are so good. Um, 270 health at the moment, but they just, they, they have that attack speed that the Celts get, their Siege attack faster, and as a result, they take down buildings so, so quickly. we got Champions out for Error, though, and obviously they are pretty damn beefy, even against it's the Woad Raiders here, simply because of that extra attack damage. 13 plus 8. You do not mess with the Aztecs and their champions. But, of course, Pedro here managing to take that castle down. And it looks like Error is wide open. And Dorid, meanwhile, raiding the back of his eco. But he's got to be careful not to lose too many uh, uh, knights here. Because he's not got the Cavalier upgrade just yet. 
and he wants to have as many knights on the field as possible when that cavalier upgrade comes in so that that upgrade affects more units uh, as many units as it can it seems like andorin's been a little bit careless at the moment in fact but he is still doing good raiding and we'll have a quick look now at the military tab to see who has done the most damage and although andorin be looking quite careless running under these town centers running into um, everybody's army fighting under a castle over here he's still killed 132 units and only lost 67 so andorin arguably and I think, in fact, definitely with the best kill-to-death ratio in this game at the moment. And he has done some fantastic raiding with his knights since he reached the castle age. Killed a lot of villagers from uh, the CZ team. And as a result, he's put them behind by quite a way uh, economically. So Andorin at the moment killing 145 units so far. Error has killed 99, but he's lost 140, and he's going to lose a lot more now fighting against those Woad Raiders. Those Woad Raiders still don't have that final attack upgrade, but that is enough to deal with the elite Eagles, because the Eagles here just, oh, they don't stand a chance against the Woad Raiders. It doesn't even look like they're fighting at the moment, and Error does not have, it seems, any more um, champions coming out. There's a few down here that are fighting the boats. Nope, but just continuing to add in those galleys. He's still in the castle age and he probably will be for the duration of this game. But those war galleys here, just laying out a little bit more damage for good measure. Hitting and running onto Error's um, champions. And champions die uh, pretty quickly to arrow fire. They're not really the best against arrow fire simply because of their slow movement speed. Um, but yeah, those, those galleys there, this war galley is going to be taking those out. And they can't be hit when they're on the center lake. So Nilkford just coming in, baiting them back. And basically distracting Error this uh, this entire time. Error now, while well, Ezeko is overrun by uh, Woad Raiders, he's got siege rams coming in from Pedro as well. And Pedro is looking really good on this top side. And that's GG from Error. Error, the uh, the player who is ahead at the moment for the CZ team, GGing out as he gets overrun in the north of the map. And one thing that I've noticed NC doing quite a lot in this in this series of games so far, they are really focusing down the person with the score lead whenever they can. And you may have noticed earlier on that massive attack on Mango who was in the pocket position over here. Mango losing that town center, nearly losing this one, forced to put up that castle, lost a lot of villagers. They focused him down quite early on, and I, I'm pretty sure it's because he had the score lead, and NC just latching onto that, coming in and focusing him down. Error, of course, had the score lead for CZ for quite some time. He was the first to Imperial for CZ. Um, he had a lot of you know eagles out. He was looking pretty threatening. But NC just focused him down. And it was, what, 3v1 over here in the north, with if you count those galleys from Nilkford. And Era just couldn't deal with that. Of course, countered very strongly by the Woad Raiders here as well. And NC just looked pretty comfortable that game. Skittle, his mid game was fantastic, but I feel like his late game kind of let him down a little bit. He, I don't think he was nearly fast enough getting his Mangadai running. Um, he was at Imperial way before he even had a castle, and that's a little bit careless. I think it probably would have been better for Nilpford to send more resources to Pedro, to be honest with you, simply because Skittle wasn't prepared to mass Mangadai as soon as he got up to the Imperial Age. But Skittle did have a really nice mid game especially with the attack on Mango, and NC just looking really good. Of course, that water control there not being too pivotal in that game, but it certainly helped with the fish boom from Nilpford as well. And a good game all round, good map in fact, good aggression on this map, and a pretty enjoyable set so far. NC going to take a game at number three, and that's going to make it 3-1 to NC, uh, sorry, 2-1 to NC. Sorry, 2-1 to NC.